Hi, welcome back. This is uh, Balu here uh, once again. Uh, today we are going to talk on uh, requirement engineering process and specifically we are going to focus on requirement and specification. Now this requirement uh, engineering process uh, video series has been uh, divided into number of parts. So today we shall only deal with part 1. So what shall we, what are we going to do in part 1 is we are going to cover these aspects. We are going to define uh, what a requirement is and what a specification is. And we are also going to see some stages involved in requirement engineering process. So what exactly you mean by requirement and what is a specification? So as you can see from the slide, uh, requirements are features or expectation given by the user for a new or a modified product. Now, uh, if any user uh, wants to develop a software product or he wants to develop a software application, he has some expectations towards that particular application. Those expectations are called as requirements. Now, if I want, uh, if, if, if you want me to give an analogy, let's say that uh, you basically wants to, you, you basically want to build a house. So, if you want to build a house, you are probably going to give some requirements. So, what are the requirements you could give? You could say that your house would have a balcony, your house would have a hall, your house would have two bedrooms. So, like this, requirements can become endless. But these requirements are not clear. Now what you have to do is you have to convert these requirements into specification. Now what do you mean by a house with a hall? You have to specify what is the dimension of the hall. You should also specify what kind of flooring you are going to uh, give for the hall. You may also have to specify what is the color of paint and what is the texture of the paint and so on. So now specification is nothing but the detailed requirement in question. Now you have to ensure that you write both the requirement and its specification properly so that both the parties, the person who is actually giving the requirement and the person who is actually taking down the requirement, both should understand what exactly is that requirement and what are the specifics of that particular requirement so that they can measure the degree of conformance. Degree of conformance means both should understand the requirements properly. Now, who gives requirements? Now that this is one important thing which you have to understand. So in case of building a house, it is a, a house is a very small project where the owner of the house gives a requirement. But in big projects, uh, we have a new word which is being introduced here and that is called as a stakeholders. So who are stakeholders? A stakeholders are is a person or a group who will be affected by the system directly or indirectly. Now you take an example that if a company wants to begin a project that company has got multiple stakeholders. You can classify those stakeholders as internal stakeholders and external stakeholders. Who are external stakeholders? People who are outside the organization or outside the boundary of the organization and the internal stakeholders are people within the organizations. For example, suppliers, society, government, creditors, shareholders, they all are important to this project what the company is going to execute. So they become stakeholders but they are contributing externally whereas you know people uh, who are within the organization like employees, managers, owners, they are actually going to be affected and they are within the organization. So stakeholders are a group who will be affected by the system directly or indirectly or it could be a person who, who will be affected directly or indirectly. Now these are the stakeholders who actually show some expectations to the project. Now, take an example of uh, this particular figure what I have shown here. Just concentrate on the last picture where I am po po pointing my mouse pointer. You just read what is uh, being written there. If you can't read, I will read it out for you. What the customer really needed. This is what has been written here. What the customer really needed. So actually customer wanted to build a product and this is what he wanted his product to look like. Now just you know shift your attention to the uh, first uh, picture as shown in the uh, mouse pointer here. The customer wanted that uh, product but he actually explained that to the person who is gathering the requirements something like this. But the person who gathered the requirements could not understand the, what the customer said so he understood like this and he communicated that to the system analyst who is another guy who is actually inside the project who actually analyzed the entire requirement like this. 
the programmer could not understand what the analysis has analyst has told so he actually wrote a program like this and finally the business consultant described like this now uh, the picture looks very funny so what the customer wanted is this and what the ultimate product came out was something like this that means there is a series of communication errors happening in the entire life cycle of the requirements gathering so if this kind of thing happens in actual project then your entire projects will become a failure so we have to pay a lot of attention in understanding the requirements properly that is why there's a separate discipline which is called as requirements engineering process now what is the requirements engineering process as you can see here it is the process of gathering the requirements analyzing it and documenting it now this consists of various stages we shall discuss those various stages in detail and always remember the output of this requirement engineering process is a solid document and that document is called as an SRS SRS stands for software requirements specification now this document is going to be the main document which is actually being used by the entire project team to develop an application whenever you have a doubt in the project you will have to go back and review the SRS. Okay. Now the requirements engineering process uh, which we are talking has got two main stages. The first stage is called uh, requirements development and the second stage is called requirements management. Now we are not going to touch on requirements management in this part of the video series. We will have the separate uh, video series on uh, requirements management. We are going to focus more on requirements development so requirements development in turn has got uh, four stages one is called elicitation the second one is called analysis the third one is specification and the fourth one is called verification now we shall see one by one what exactly are these stages and what exactly we do in each of these stage now the same development I have actually brought a broader diagram here where I am actually showing what exactly happens in the end of the each stage now before we actually even start the requirements gathering uh, process or requirement elicitation process we are going to perform a study called feasibility study now this is a very important study before even we kick start with this particular process now what exactly is a feasibility study the feasibility study is going to check whether it is feasible to go ahead with the requirements gathering or not now if you find that it is not feasible then you are not going to actually kick start this particular process and we can say that the whole project has been put into a parking stage or it has gone to a cold storage stage where we are not going to go ahead with that particular project now once the feasible once, once the feasibility report is satisfied then you go ahead with the subsequent uh, stages of your requirements development and out of each stage you get one one document and all these document merge together and they actually combine to form the requirements document and this requirements document is nothing but your software requirements specification so what do you do in uh, feasibility study study i have told you this study analyzes whether the software product can be practically materialized in terms of implementation, contribution of project to organization, cost constraints and as per values and objectives of the organization. Now the customer comes and approaches you and says that he wants to develop a project and you are going to or you are responsible for developing that particular project but once you understand the basic requirements of a customer you just come to a conclusion that this project will approximately is going to cost you around 25 crores now the customer may not have that much of funding with him he may not have that much of operational cost so which means that the economic feasibility is not satisfied or the customer comes and gives you a set of requirements and say that develop this new application for me and that application is not legally approved by government of india that means that the legal feasibility is not satisfied so like this there are different types of feasibility you have uh, economic feasibility you have social feasibility you have operational feasibility you have a legal feasibility now once all these uh, feasibilities are satisfied then only you can go ahead with that collection of requirements which is the next stage which is called as elicitation of requirements elicitation actually means gathering the 
requirements or discovering the requirements or in other words I can also say understanding the user needs and constraints of the system. Now there is not one single user of the system, please note that there are multiple users of the system and all these users are actually called as stakeholders and each stakeholder will have his own expectation and his own requirement on that particular system. So you need to really understand what each stakeholder's requirements are and you need to analyze each and every requirement in detail and that is called as analysis. So analysis is the process of refining the user's needs and constraints. And also it involves two important things. One is called avoiding requirement conflict and the second one is called requirement prioritization. Now what do you mean by uh, requirement conflict? Now as I told you earlier, there are so many stakeholders who are giving requirements. There could be a situation where two or more stakeholders give the same set of requirements. So you need to really resolve those ambiguities and you'll have to only consider one set of requirements and once you have so many requirements coming into picture you may have to prioritize those requirements like which requirement you are going to take it on first priority and convert it into a software product and which is the requirement you are going to put it on hold so that you are going to take it at the later part of the development now that is called as requirement prioritization remember both these things comes under your analysis stage of your requirements development now once you are done with that, then you actually enter into the next stage which is called as uh, specification. The specification talks about documenting that requirement in more detail, okay, understanding the constraints in more detail so that you have the specific set of requirements with more details into it so that each and requirement is very easily understood. And once you are done with that, then you go to the next stage is called as verification or validation. Now what is verification or validation is to again counter check whether all the requirements has been gathered properly or not and more importantly whether the requirement is actually conforming to the customer needs or not. Now conformance to the customer needs or customer's expectation is actually carried out in this stage called as verification or validation. So what exactly you do in this particular stage? You perform certain checks. And these checks are actually very important. We call them as uh, validity checks, consistency checks, uh, realism checks and verifiability checks. So what is a validity check? A validity check is a check to check whether that requirement is a valid requirement or not. See, because stakeholders uh, you know, generally when they give requirements, they don't have the knowledge of the system. They simply give a requirement and they don't realize whether that requirement can actually be a valid requirement or not. So you should actually check whether it is a valid requirement or not and doing so is actually done using a validity check. Next is a consistency check. All your requirements must be consistent. Now what do you mean by consistency? It has to be unique which means there should not be any conflicting requirements. Now what is a realism check? Realism checks talks about whether that requirement can be realized into a software module or not. Now there could be a requirement where which cannot be realized into software at all. You cannot really convert that requirement into a software module. So such requirements has to be discarded. And the last thing is called as a verifiability check. Now verifiability checks talks about the justification. Now the moment a requirement is given and you are actually converting that requirement into a software module you have to justify whether that module what you have actually uh, created is actually conforming to the requirement or not and that justification can be done by writing certain test cases we will have a separate uh, session on test cases now just try and understand that verifiability is to check whether the requirement can be tested or not now once it is uh, completed then what you basically do is you put all these things in a document called as software requirement specification document. Now there is another stage, uh, important stage in software uh, uh, requirements engineering process and that is called as a requirements management stage. The requirements management stage is more towards you know it is a process of managing the changing requirements. Generally what happens once you gather the requirements, convert that particular requirements into a software module, the requirements could change at any any stage of a project or the requirements could actually change even after the software is implemented. So in that case, uh, how you are going to manage those changes and it is sometimes a continuous activity because it can happen anywhere 
uh, during your uh, engineering life cycle. So we can also call requirements management as a change management or some people even also call it as configuration management. So this requirement management is another knowledge area which is very important. So we will have a separate uh, uh, video lecture exclusively on requirements management. Okay. Now thank you so much for uh, watching this uh, particular video. Uh, please subscribe to our channel uh, SP Tech and uh, don't forget us to like on my Facebook page uh, SP Tech B A N G. See you soon on the next video series. Bye bye.